we've talked about what Jacques doucette has been doing. He's been doing a fantastic job of chasing down some of the the, uh, the the characters within LSU football, both past and present, and getting great stories from him. And he chased uh, Matt Malk down, who was the uh, the 2003 national championship quarterback, um, obviously, and now up in Denver, who's a dentist. He was drafted by the uh, the, the Denver Broncos uh, and has hung out in that area and stayed in uh, a part of the Denver area. Uh, he was on with, with Jacques, and Jacques's been doing this via uh, his WAFB Zoom feed, and then he's been putting some of the, the, the clips on social media on his Twitter account. Um, and we, we were talking about Doug Oquan yesterday. Let me, let me, let me bring this whole thing full okay. circle. Yeah, see, we're good. Um, because Brody Miller had a great write-up at The Athletic about Doug Oquan, and Doug Oquan is the video coordinator for LSU and really the guy that is, is behind everything that's going on from a video standpoint uh, within LSU football. I mean, he's kind of the godfather of video uh, within the state. If you read the article, it's a great article. But something that jumps out within that write-up that, that Brody Miller talks about is that, you know, O'Quinn is recognized as probably one of the nicest guys in the building. T-Bob can, can, can attest to this. Yeah, I mean, no, T-Bob's I mean, he was awesome. He's, I mean, he was he's awesome. just great. He's a great person. Um, and every single day, he would walk past Nick Saban in the hall of uh, of the football facility when Saban was the coach. And this is through like the first six or seven months uh, that, that he's on the job. Every day, like clockwork, those two guys are in the building and they would cross each other's paths at the same place at the same time every single day. And Doug, being the nice guy that he is, every day would say, good morning, coach. Good morning, coach. Good morning, coach. And always, like clockwork, get no response. Saban just head down, not looking up, no eye contact, doesn't even hear the words that are said to him, oh. uh, and gives no response, or, or so Doug thought. And Doug one day, say, he's walking and says, you know, finally, he's, it, 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 it angers Doug. You know, like, why can't this guy just even recognize that I'm saying good morning, thank you, or have a yeah, nice like day, some basic good morning. human decency. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so one morning, Doug doesn't say good morning to him, and Saban makes a comment, what's the matter, Doug, you can't tell me good morning? Or something like that as he's walking by. I mean, is that unbelievable? So, so, so then Matt Malk has the same type of reputation within the LSU football program. You ask around. I mean, you ask some, some of the great people that have come through that program, and they talk about Malk like he's on another level. I mean, even people that have been there since day, Greg Stringfellow. I mean, you know, it's just some of the people that you can talk to about Matt Malk. His reputation within the football program is pristine. Forget what he accomplished on the field, being one of only four people on the planet that have gotten a national championship and been the quarterback for LSU to do so. Um, and here's how Saban and Malk's relationship, I had no idea. I learned this in Jacques' sit-down with Malk that, that this was the dynamic between the head coach and starting quarterback. There was a little bit of that, too, is, you know, Jamarcus, Matt Flynn, we had some guys underneath us that – and I didn't necessarily get the warm and fuzzies like, you know, Coach Saban, you know, super excited about me coming back. Uh, I mean, he would have loved to have had me, but it wasn't a, hey, man, we, you know, I think he was kind of, he never really looked at me as, uh, I, I think I, I kind of surprised him that I ever even started at LSU, um, to be honest with you. Yeah. More from Mark talking about uh, his time at LSU. That's my one regret. I wish I would have. I really do. Um, I, at the time, I, you know, I was, I'd already graduated. Um, you know, I, I felt like it couldn't have gone better. You know what I mean? That season uh, was just so fantastic. But I think at the time, I mean, I knew I loved LSU. You know what I mean? I, I just, I would do anything for that school. I mean, I just, I, I, I love being a Tiger. I love everything about it. I love the people, the fans. I mean, it's just everything about it. And I, I don't realize, you don't realize how much you'll miss that. If you're looking for good conversations and good storytelling, Jock's done a great job of, of tracking down some of the, the past characters of that 2003 team, whether it was uh, Will Muschamp, who had some good stories with Jock on social media, and Matt Malk. Um, I know Trev Falk was not on the 03 team, but he was on with Jock a couple of days ago talking some some Saban, some Saban stories in LSU football during that time, but it was interesting to was, hear. Was Mock recruited by Saban? He was. Okay. He was. He was recruited by Saban, and he was actually a baseball player you know, coming out of the minor league system, and he was an older player at the time. I yeah. mean, he was kind of like these Chris Winkies, um, Brandon Whedons, who yep. have come back to college and, and been a little bit more mature and gotten on the, 
on the roster. Zach Von Rosenberg uh, for LSU right now is a very similar subject. I, I just thought always along that, that, that Saban and Malk's dynamic was a good working relationship between head coach and starting quarterback. And to hear Malk talk about how it, it was really – uh, and to hear it characterized as it was, it, it just it, it never it never really was. I mean, well, I mean, never... I, you know, if you, if you just look at maybe what like Jamarcus Russell went on to do statistically at that position and his like pure physical skill set, and maybe even Matt Flynn to a certain extent, I think you can understand why Saban was maybe kind of looking forward, you know, towards the future. But that said, I th- I think that Matt Mock also kind of made a career of just. Uh, proving people wrong or outdoing yeah. the expectations, right? I mean, even that you, – you, so Danny's playing the Tennessee highlights right now. I mean, I was at that game my Me grandfather, too. SC championship. I'll, I'll never forget that day when Rohan went down. You thought you were dead in the water. And here comes this kid, Matt Mogg. And so, like, throughout his career, that's that, that's what he did. Also, uh, yeah, can't believe that Saban's not a nice person. Wow, Un, unreal. Who would have ever guessed? The Doug O'Quinn thing makes me so mad. Because while it is kind of funny, that means that he was willfully ignoring him every single day. I know. I mean, the the, the first morning that he recognizes when he doesn't say it means that he obviously caught every oh, yeah. morning when he oh, was. Yeah, he's cataloging 